tonight on KRCG 13 Live at 5. Blood is found in a missing Jefferson City woman's vehicle as an endangered person advisory is issued. A summer reading program is helping bridge the gap between public safety officials and the community. Tonight we will make history. Uh, about 100 years in the making. It's day two of the Democratic National Convention and a Show Me State native has announced he'll make the trip to the city of brotherly love. And it's another warm summer evening and time for another backyard barbecue. KRCT 13 Live at 5 starts right now. Live from across mid-Missouri, this is KRCT 13 Live at 5. Good evening, I'm Megan Lane. Thanks for joining us. The Highway Patrol has issued an endangered person advisory. It's for a missing Jefferson City woman. The Jefferson City Police Department's asking for the public's help to find this woman, 30-year-old Kelly Clark. She was last seen yesterday. Officers were asked to check on Clark and did speak to her on the phone. 911 operators, though, they heard an argument before the call was disconnected. Officers say Clark at the time was with her boyfriend, 47-year-old Jimmy Johnson. A couple hours later, we located the vehicle in the uh, 200 block of East Ashley Street. Neither Kelly Clark nor Jimmy Johnson were in the vehicle. We did find some what appeared to be blood uh, spots in the vehicle. We then we since took the vehicle into custody. We have it here at the police department, and we have not been able to locate either Kelly Clark nor Jimmy Johnson. Investigators describe Clark as a white female, 5'9", 230 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. Johnson is listed as a person of interest right now. He's described as a black male, 6'1", 200 pounds, with short hair. He's known to have ties to both Jefferson City and St. Louis. Clark and Johnson may be traveling in a 1999 silver or gray Ford Taurus station wagon with Missouri license FJ1U1F. Anyone with information is urged to call the Jefferson City Police Department. That number is 573-634-6400. Or you can also call the Jefferson City Area Crime Stoppers. That number, 573-659-TIPS. A summer reading program gave kids a chance to connect with local public service officers today in Fulton. KRCG 13 Stephanie Hirata was there and joins us now with the details. That's right, Megan. Law enforcement officers, fire, EMT, and military personnel joined a group of 12 kids for lunch at the Guiding Light Missionary Baptist Church in Fulton this afternoon. Charles Jackson, a pastor and former law enforcement officer, started a summer reading program last year to encourage children to keep reading while they're on summer break. The pastor cooked food for the 24 officers to sit and eat with the kids in the program. At the end, some officers read with the kids. Jackson says he hopes today's luncheon will help the kids connect with officers. With the way uh, the things are going in our country, uh, the animosity towards law enforcement and so forth, I want to give them uh, exposure to some of the people that are taking care of making sure they're safe and that cares about them. And a lot of times when you don't interact with people, you don't know that. And so just to, uh, to, to get, establish that type of relationship. The summer reading program is now turning into a year-round program where the kids will meet at least once a month during the school year. The program is open to kids of all ages. Reporting for KRCG 13, I'm Stephanie Hirata. All right, thanks, Stephanie. New tonight at 5, community leaders in Randolph County have something new to celebrate. Governor Nixon today announced the county has become a nationally certified workforce-ready area. KRCG 13's Mark Slavitt has the details from Moberly. Randolph County economic development leaders are saying workers in their area are now better prepared for success as a certified work ready community. Governor Nixon made the announcement before a small crowd at Moberly City Hall. Nixon said the national designation will help Randolph County business owners attract and retain new jobs and qualified workers. With Moberly being right here in the center of the state with good education around it and now this certified work ready, uh, it will be on the list for site selection teams. It will be on the list for major organizations when they're talking about making investments. Missouri now has more than 30 certified counties. Moberly economic development leaders say successful efforts to strengthen their workforce training programs 
and certify their workers will help attract and support growing companies. I think it is already helping attract some businesses and I think site selectors are really looking at the counties that are certified work ready communities. State statistics show Missouri employers have created more than 100,000 jobs since 2010. Governor Nixon says he expects bigger growth in new business creation as more Missouri counties earn certified work ready community status. In Randolph County, Mark Slavitt, KRCG 13. In 2012, Missouri was selected as one of the first four states to participate in the nationally certified Work Ready Communities Initiative. And now, your KRCG 13 Weather Authority First Weather. We are live in California, Missouri for Big Backyard Barbecue tonight. Another gorgeous Tuesday evening for some backyard again. California, Missouri, home of the Pintos. We have had uh, just a few scattered clouds across the area. And I'm telling you, these guys are excited to grab some of that food off the barbecue grill here later tonight. And we'll be sampling that, of course, a little bit later on. But it is a uh, gorgeous evening for weather. Just a few scattered clouds. A live look right now on our Scruggs Lumber camera showing just really a few scattered clouds off in the background. Really a lot of blue skies and light winds across the area, especially here in the shade where we're at. It is feeling pretty good. However, a different story south of I-44, some strong showers and thunderstorms there. And some of those are starting to creep a little bit farther to the north up around the Vienna and Vichy area there through parts of Marys County and all along I-44 as you roll through Phelps County. Temperatures there cooler in the 70s. Here, we're still on the warm side. Seasonal temperatures looking for mid to upper 80s. That heat index in our area still makes it feel like we're in the mid 90s all across mid-Missouri. And we're going to continue to find some warm conditions here over the next, really, week or so. But we are going to continue to find rain chances later this week as well. In the meantime, tonight, we're going to find upper 80s for the big backyard barbecue. And by the time this thing wraps up, we'll still find muggy conditions and temperatures still in the mid 80s. We'll talk a little more on those rain chances and still some of that summer heat in your forecast coming up in a few minutes. Megan. All right, thanks, Zach. Governor Jay Nixon is now planning to attend the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia tomorrow and Thursday. Nixon will be part of the audience watching President Obama address the convention tomorrow night. The Missouri governor will also witness history as Hillary Clinton delivers her nomination acceptance speech. That's Thursday night, and she'll do it as the first woman running for president in a major party. Nixon said he wasn't surprised when supporters, though, of Bernie Sanders booed several speakers, including Michelle Obama last night. I think we've been a little spoiled lately over the last 10 or 15 years as to the kind of the pre-programmed nature of conventions. And I think both conventions this year have got uh, democracy breaking out inside them, and that's okay. It's America. Bill Clinton takes the stage tonight at that Democratic National Convention to make a pitch for his wife. Don Champion has more on history in the making in Philadelphia. It could be another night of drama at the Democratic National Convention as Democrats hold a roll call of states to officially make Hillary Clinton their nominee for president. Tonight we will make history, uh, about 100 years in the making. The roll call may be another opportunity for supporters of Bernie Sanders to voice their anger with the DNC. This afternoon, hundreds of his supporters chanted Bernie or bust at a rally in Center City, Philadelphia. Marie Adams, a lifelong Democrat, says she's fed up. I'm leaving the party. I mean, how can you belong to a party that knowingly decided who was going to be their nominee before even one vote was cast. Bill Clinton will try to unify the party tonight as the headline speaker. He'll make the case that his wife is a change maker who deserves the job he held for eight years. The convention will also give the stage to the group Mothers of the Movement, black mothers who lost their children to police and gun violence. Sabrina Fulton's teenage son, Trayvon Martin, was shot to death by a neighborhood watch coordinator in a gated community in Florida. She's met with Clinton several times since then. So we stand with her because she stood with us. Women and families are two issues the DNC is showcasing as it tries to sell Clinton as the best choice to lead the country. Don Champion, CBS News, Philadelphia. You can watch coverage of that convention here later tonight on KRCG 13. 
Zach has a complete forecast next. Plus, the heat wave gripping the nation is posing a risk for small children. We'll tell you about the dangers of leaving kids in hot cars. Next, ET, what JoJo is telling us. Your KRZG 13 Weather Authority forecast. We are live in California for the big backyard barbecue tonight. A, another fantastic night, another great group of people. The big backyard barbecue course with the Missouri Beef Council and High V. Our winners and their families and guests are all lined up. They're excited. They're well involved in conversation here, but uh, you caught them a little bit earlier. They are excited for some big meat tonight and, again, some great grilling going on by the Monotal Cattlemen's Association too. Weather looking really good. We're out here at Proctor Park and we are looking really at quite a bit of blue skies, just a few clouds and temperatures are still going to be on the warm side tonight, but if you're in the shade, it's going to feel all right. Just some scattered clouds tonight, temperatures falling out of the 80s, back into the 70s tomorrow morning with a light wind out of the east. Looking ahead to the weekend, not bad here either. Continued muggy for your Saturday, a chance at a few pop-ups here and there. A little warmer on Sunday, some isolated storms possible and high temperatures both days in the mid to upper 80s. As we look over the last six hours, just a few scattered clouds really across the Missouri, but along I-44, there have been a couple showers of thunderstorms that have been popping up, starting to creep a little bit farther to the north. Areas around Vichy getting some of that right now, even a little bit of lightning within that. Out towards Vienna, you're starting to find a little bit of that cloud cover, maybe even a few light showers. Fort Leonard would also finding some of those light raindrops. Right now, temperatures are in the 70s where the rain has fallen elsewhere where there's mostly sunny skies. We're in the mid to upper 80s. The humidity still in effect as we are looking here at the afternoon. The temperatures are feeling like low to mid 90s. In fact, it's feeling a little closer to 100 degrees right now in Lynn. They were a little warmer than that with that heat index earlier this afternoon. A live look over Jefferson City, our Scruggs Lumber camera. 88 degrees, your temperature feels like 95 with an east wind right now. That's six miles per hour. The regional picture showing a larger cluster of showers and thunderstorms all along that I-44 area and to south, especially across the Boot Hill and down into southeast Missouri. We have a stalled front there that's continuing to trigger some of these showers and thunderstorms. And this front will meander north and south over the next couple days and keep chances for some showers and thunderstorms in your forecast. Here's the hour-by-hour hour forecast as we head into your evening hours. Just a few clouds here and there. We are dry, though, when you wake up on Wednesday morning. I do think we'll find just a little bit of cloud cover as we go towards the afternoon on your Wednesday. We'll find a partly cloudy sky. Could find a couple pop-ups once again on your Wednesday. Overall, though, I still think most of us are going to stay dry. Wednesday night into Thursday, after the sun sets, we'll find those showers and thunderstorms weakening, just a few clouds remaining, dry to start off your Thursday. But I do think by Thursday afternoon, we'll find a couple rounds of some showers and thunderstorms through the area. And I think a better chance for those showers and thunderstorms coming in late Thursday, we could find some heavy rainfall with a couple of those thunderstorms if you find yourself underneath them. Your seven day forecast continues those better chances for rain showers on your Thursday temperatures for the next couple days, 70s in the morning, Upper 80s for the afternoon. Better chance of rain Thursday. Continuing for those chances of showers on your Friday. Temperatures cooler in the mid 80s. As so we get into the weekend, some hit and miss showers Saturday. Most of us are dry. Rain chances increase a little bit as we get into your Sunday afternoon. Temperatures in the 80s. It looks like you might find some temperatures warming back up early next week with some of those rain showers continuing. We are live in California. It's the big backyard barbecue. Megan, we got some good food on the grill tonight. I'll see if I can save a burger and bring it back for you. How's that sound? Zach, that sounds wonderful. I would appreciate that. A little later, we'll head back out to the backyard barbecue for some more fun. But first, it's a cautionary tale about leaving children in the car. Coming up, we have some easy tips to remember so you won't forget someone in the back seat. Closed captioning is brought to you by Jones Beltone Hearing Care. Children have died in the last week across the country after they were left in hot cars. That includes a three-year-old boy when his parents left him in an SUV outside a Dallas church. In many cases, parents forget about a small child in the back seat. But new technology from one automaker could help reduce that risk. Chris Van Cleve reports. Just a great, great child, always happy. Reggie McKinnon's 17-month-old daughter Peyton died after he forgot to drop her off at daycare following a doctor's appointment. He drove back to work just one block from Peyton's daycare. When I opened the, the back door to the vehicle, um, 
you know, that's the moment that my, my life and my family's life changed forever. I found Peyton uh, still in her car seat. So far this year, 23 kids in 14 states have died after being left in hot cars. Experts say heat stroke can happen when the outside temperature is as low as 57 degrees. It's very preventable. Deborah Hersman is the former chair of the NTSB and now runs the National Safety Council. She's urging parents to look before they lock their cars. Truly, it's that we are distracted by the task at hand. We're not remembering the most precious cargo that's in the back seat. That's a warning sound General Motors hopes can help prevent these types of accidents. The new technology built into the 2017 GMC Acadia is the first of its kind to alert drivers if a rear door was opened prior to the start of their current drive. A simple reminder that could save a life. The warning system in the Acadia is coming to other GM models in the near future. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, New York. Experts recommend parents put their purse, wallet, or cell phone in the back seat as a reminder. After the break, we'll head back out to the backyard barbecue. We'll be checking in with KRCG 13 sports director Rod Smith. Eric Crichton's burst upon the scene with his slick. Welcome back to California. We are live at the backyard barbecue, and the burgers are on. Can you tell? It's a great night to barbecue. Davin Altoff is with the Missouri Beef Council, and he joins us. He's also a former California Pinto, played for the Pintos back in the 90s, right before they won a state championship in football. You remember those days? Well, I do, Rod, and I welcome you guys to what I would consider cattle country and football go. country. And in cattle country, we breed good football players because we eat lots of beef. <laughs> That's great. And we got some guest grillers today, Davin. We do. We have on the grill Chuck Massengill, who's actually on our board, Missouri Beef Industry Council board. We have Tom Human, who's president of the County Cattlemen's Association. And we have Blue Geyer, also with the County Cattlemen's Association. And these guys are professional grillers, let me tell you. That's what we understand. Chuck, we got to go check out what he's doing on the grill here. Chuck, what do you have special on the grill for us? These are not just ordinary burgers. These are filet mignon burgers. Oh, they have blue cheese mixed in. They have cheddar cheese mixed in. or spices mixed into it and they are delicious. I'm, I can tell by the smoke they're going to be delicious. <laughs> and that's coming from the Cattlemen's Association. You guys take this serious. It's from hy yes, absolutely. We know that uh, a, a three ounce serving of lean beef will give you 50% of your uh, protein needs for a day. And so uh, <laughs> we're proud to do it, plus it tastes really good. Yeah, I just know about the taste part of it, Chuck. It's really good. We're going to sample these things over the 6 o'clock newscast. We are here live at California Backyard Barbecue. Megan, it's an outstanding night for burgers. It sounds like it. Now if you just bring me one back, that would be great. Thanks, Rod. Zach has a final check of our forecast coming up after the break. What you doing? Just checking my free credit score at Credit Karma. Back in California, Missouri for the big backyard barbecue with the Missouri Beef Council and hy V. The weather tonight is fantastic. Just a few scattered clouds here and there. There are a few areas of some rain showers uh, along I-44 down around the Rolla area and Fort Leonard Wood. But for most of us, we're dry tonight. We'll find temperatures in the 70s tomorrow morning. It'll be a muggy start, still hot and humid as we get into your afternoon on Wednesday. A couple pop-ups will be possible. High temperatures, upper 80s to near 90 degrees. That heat index tomorrow, once again, back into the mid-90s. A better chance to rain on Thursday. And we'll find slightly cooler weather getting into the weekend. Still some hit and miss showers with temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. Again, we are live in California, Missouri. It is the Big Backyard Barbecue. We'll have more from the grill coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Megan, back to you. All right, that's it for us. We'll see you at 6.